All right, so we already have a top uh, Neptune Apex fails or mistakes, but we're constantly learning here. So today, a whole new take and some brand new things of things that we've learned along the way and uh, mistakes we've made so you don't have to experience them yourself. All right, so number one, if you own an Apex and you haven't watched this specific series, uh, kind of a fail. Yeah, so that's the mistake is we have a Master Your Neptune Apex series. The library keeps getting bigger and bigger. And uh, we're not just showing you how to set this thing up and telling you a bunch of things to write in. We're actually giving you some secrets, tips, and tricks on if you have a piece of equipment that's going on this thing, how this can make it safer and better. So we already have a 20 to 30 part series on yeah. using the Apex and learning all about how it works. And it's this module and that module and the other module. Mm -hmm totally different approach this time. So this time, rather than using a uh, outlet here and telling you how to use this outlet, this outlet actually has a protein skimmer attached to it. So let's master the protein skimmer using an Apex. Mm. Let's make it safer, let's improve the performance, and overall, just match, master both the Apex and the skimmer at the same time. Number two, this is super debatable, and this is gonna be a mm -hmm. different answer to different people, but... Yeah, I made this mistake early on when I first started looking at my own Neptune Apex, and that was focusing on control versus monitoring. Me, I just wanted to be able to turn everything off and on, and I thought it was just really cool. Rather than thinking of the other benefit, how can this Apex help monitor my tank to keep it alive and happy and without failing? Yeah, so in the beginning, for me, I didn't understand it either. Mm. So it was, well, why do I need automation? Why do I need all this redundancy? And all these things are turning on and off and on and whatever. Those are all value. Those are all like, you know, they call uh, the community control freaks. Because, yeah. yeah. you know, you get to like have harness all the power. But there's one piece of it that uh, actually I think is a universal yes to. If I ask you this question, everyone will raise their answer or mm -hmm. a hand and say yes. It's would you want to know if your uh, return pump broke? Yes. Would you want to know if your skimmer broke? Yes. Would you want to know if your heater broke? Of course. Would you want to know if your lights were stuck on? Would you want to know if your refugium was stuck on? Yeah. Would you want to know if any piece of equipment on the whole system broke? And then the S next question is, if you didn't know, how long would it take you mm. to find out? How long would it take you to find out the heaters broke and either are overheating or the tank's just super, super cold? Well, how often do you put your hand in it to know without uh, actually having some kind of monitor to it? And how often do you see it? If it happened while you were at work, if it happened while you were sleeping, how long would it take? So the answer to this thing is that most of us, given the opportunity, would like to know the moment any of the life support breaks on the whole system. Forget the redundancy, forget the, uh, like all, all of the automation, forget all of that. The longevity of the tank just gets much, much, much longer. If the moment that anything breaks, it shows up on my phone, an alarm goes off, even an audible alarm in the house goes off, telling me, you know what, your tank needs you, go help it. Number three is actually a problem that I've seen so many times, and I'd like to see a solution to, because we all do it, and even though we talk about it today, we're gonna do it again, <laughs> so let's find something out to it. Yeah, the mistake is turning off your alarms. I don't know, I've done this multiple times, thinking I was gonna come back to it, but oh, my pH is fluctuating between my alarm phase, right? Well, phone alert, phone alert, phone alert. Okay, I'm gonna go in and shut this thing off, and I'll, I'll remember to turn it back on. No, I don't. Never. That means none uh, of my alarms are on. Yeah, so the nature of it is, ah, the pH is up slightly, it's waking me up at night, turn it off. Mm. I'm not gonna get out of bed and go solve a tenth of a pH problem, you yep. know? Uh, and so here's the problem. The turn it off, when do you remember to turn it back on? I hardly do. Yeah, okay, so it's time for the uh, Neptune fusion, I think, uh, to recognize that all human beings are flawed. Uh, <laughs> and this is actually uh, like a mistake that we all will make when the alarms start going off. Mm. So what if the, uh, when you turn off the alarms, it just automatically turns back on in 24 hours or something mm. like that? Or send you a reminder. Do you know, you remember that your alarms uh, are off? Yes, a reminder saying, you Don't hey, have to turn them back on, but do you remember that your alarms yeah, are once off? Once a day, uh, mm. turn your alarms back on because that was a mistake. So uh, if Neptune, you're out there listening, I would <laughs> love to see this. Number four is an interesting one. Yeah. Uh, don't waste money. Yeah, so uh, you have eight outlets for your energy bar and there's a, you know, there's a variety of equipment that we plug in that 
doesn't have control through here other than on and off function. So in which case, you know, if I have if I have uh, power heads or lights or something that I have a separate app for or control with, uh, there's really no reason to waste an outlet. So I'm gonna go all the way to no reason, but make sure there is a reason. That's true. You, you know, so uh, maybe I don't need my Vortex in here because the Vortex have their own controls on them and they have their own feed modes and mm -hmm. all that other stuff. But what if I want a single place for a feed mode? I want one button that does all these things and the Apex will produce that. So if it's important to me and I got four of like, I mean, think about the cost here. Yeah. Because uh, if I had four, you know, uh, Vortex, I'm gonna take up four outlets. That feed mode better be really valuable to mm. me. But if it's not, then uh, just plug them into a standard power bar and run them that way. However, the part that's kind of uh, gets a little murky is the power monitoring. Yeah. I want to know when the stuff breaks. Yeah. So at least think about what you plugged in here and whether it really needs an outlet uh, on an Apex bar because they're a lot more expensive than your standard energy bar that you'd get at a hardware store. Number five, I broke a power bar, at least an outlet this way. Yeah, so don't make the mistake of setting your heater settings so tightly, like a tenth of a degree, that it all it does is toggle that outlet off and on and off and on and off and on. Yeah, so if you, I mean, the tendency here is I want stability, right? Yeah. Well, you know, the ocean has currents, and if you've gone snorkeling or diving, you'll know that it's not always the exact same temperature. Uh, mm. You know, depending on where, is it coming off shore, is it coming off wherever? So uh, a little fluctuation is okay. A tenth of a degree certainly must be. Uh, and if you're turning it on and off like that much, you're turning off millions of times a year, and you're going to wear it out. And now, uh, don't necessarily apply that equation though all the way to a half a degree because a half a degree will turn on much less often. So, uh, you know, I think probably around the half a degree or at least three tenths of a degree starts to be the right solution. Some might, people might even go to a whole degree, but don't turn it off and on seeking that perfect solution of 0.1, uh, point, point 0.1 degrees because you're probably gonna wear out the outlet unnecessarily. Number six is something that actually is showing up in the uh, Master Apex uh, series because mm -hmm. I didn't know a lot of this stuff. Yeah, so there's the Apex Ready and then there's Beyond Apex Ready. So the mistake here is not considering the Neptune specific, uh, you know, accessories and they, or even just equipment like your pumps, your core pump, your dose, uh, dosers and oh, the ATK and a variety of these things that are smarter than your average ATO or your average piece of equipment, but even more smarter when you put them into the Apex ecosphere. Yeah, so there's a lot of things I call Apex ready. Like yeah. you have zero to 10 or whatever, and you get like a little bit of bonus. I get more finite control of mm -hmm. my DC pump that maybe only has five steps now has a 10 or more. Right. Uh, but, there's things like, you know, the core DC pump where now when it fails, not only does it fail, but because it was built for this thing and they're interconnected, uh, it'll tell me why it's failed. It'll mm. tell me it's overheated. It'll tell me that it's starting to get some friction or, or whatnot from being uh, dirty. It's gonna tell me a lot of different things. And you see the ATK, it's not just an auto top off, it's also a leak sensor. It's mm -hmm. got optical sensors, it's got the PMUP on it. It's got like all these different sensors on it that can tell you more than just being an auto top off. So a lot of the things that Neptune produces for itself actually is better than Apex Ready. Number seven related to that, this is probably the most overlooked module and can cause the most damage to your home, the biggest regret you'll have. Yeah, do not do not overlook the leak sensors. There's the FMM module, whether you have an ATK, whether you have a flow meter kit, which you, whether you have the actual leak detection kit, any one of those you can put leak detection sensors in. So just go ahead and spend a few bucks to get some leak sensors and put them in places where if water is not where it should be, you can get a notification and actually do something about it. If you've never had a leak, go buy a lotto ticket because you're the man. Uh, not me. Yeah. <laughs> uh, most people will develop a leak over time. So think about, look at where your tank is, what it's on mm. top of. If it's on top of some expensive hardwood floors, uh, the cost of the leak sensors is totally irrelevant to the equation. Mm. Uh, if it's on top of a cement floor, you can just mop up and it's not a big deal, so be it. Uh, just the uh, cost of a mop is actually pretty cheap. But like, 
there's a high likelihood that at some point uh, a leak will develop somewhere, something will break, an auto top off will overflow the sump, something mm -hmm. will happen on a long enough timeline because it's a big box of water in your living space and big boxes of water tend to have uh, issues. And actually, some of the more catastrophic ones are not catastrophic in, say, in terms of a, like a seam burst. A little tiny leak. Yeah, a little tiny leak just dribbling down where you wouldn't notice and just totally deteriorating your stand and uh, you know crumbling it apart over time. So having that leak sensor can solve all kinds of uh, problems and save a lot of money over time. At number eight, there's something pretty on this table and it isn't necessarily the apex. Yeah, so the mistake here is not thinking about a control board or some way to dress up you know your apex uh, a lot of people install them in the stands but what do you do with the cords and where do you mount them and where do you route them and things like that uh, there are accessories out there that just can not only make your apex look better but actually clean up a lot of the uh, cords and things that might get in the way in your stand uh, making it easier to access and probably a heck of a lot safer yeah, so yeah, I think uh, the team over at uh, Neptune actually shared that one time with me. Mm, uh, yeah. If it uh, is uh, clean, our clean is synonymous with safe. Yeah. Right? Uh, so we can hide all the cords back here. You can see it actually in the build that we did at, at my house uh, mm -hmm. with the 360. We use a lot of these controller boards, and uh, Kyle over Adaptive Reefs uh, produces, um, produces this one right here. The deluxe board here, yeah. Yeah, so uh, you can mount this a little bit off your wall, a little bit off your cabinet, and then hide all the cords behind it, and it just makes a really clean, nice install. Number nine, I don't always have my phone on me, and I don't necessarily want to either. Yeah, I think the mistake here is thinking that you'll always have your phone on you or something to that effect. But what if you're just walking by your tank, you're, uh, you don't have your phone? Well, the mistake is not having some kind of visual display, whether it's the little visual uh, or whether it's a little display module, but even better, a larger or you know inexpensive uh, tablet that you can actually control from and see. So pretty much any tablet with a browser for the most part can uh, you know, work on Fusion. So you can get these things for really cheap these yeah. days. So you get a big tablet, get one, you can just mount it anywhere. And now I got touch screen and I can you know, control my computer or my aquarium. I can control, like see all of the different notes. I can type in the alkalinity really easy. Also, you can pick up like a little thumb keyboard, you know, to type yeah. stuff in there. It's really nice. It's really easy to do all the stuff at the aquarium, better than your phone in most cases. And if you want, you can go even farther than that. Uh, <laughs> at my house, we installed a touchscreen monitor into a really inexpensive window PC. And now I have this big, huge touchscreen and I can see all of it at once and turn the outlets on and off. It's really, really cool. So kind of a cool way to like trick out your Apex and your aquarium. Number 10, this is like a empty, empty waste of space. <laughs> yeah, don't, don't get wrapped up or don't make the mistake of getting wrapped up in that conversation of whether you need an apex or not in the first place, it kind of goes back to that control versus monitoring conversation. I think everybody could find some value in knowing uh, the minute that something happens or monitoring a wide variety of uh, you know, parameters with your tank. So whether or not you need one shouldn't be the debate. Yeah, for you, I think it's just a cost thing. Yeah. You know? So at any point, at some point, every single person will say, you know what, the 500 bucks here is totally worth the investment. Uh, if you've got $500 into your aquarium at the moment, probably not. Yeah. Uh, if you're three years into this and I got uh, $4,000 into coral and they've grown from tiny little frags into colonies, I'm super proud of them. And now I'm starting to hit the point at three years where a lot of equipment is starting to fail. The amount of hands that go up and say, I'd like to know when those things fail goes up dramatically. So don't listen to anybody that tells you you need an aquarium controller, you need an apex. Just understand the value you're getting. The first one is I get to know the moment anything fails, whether it's power monitoring or sensors. And two, if you're really reef nerdy like Randy here, you can actually go past that and implement all the redundancies and fail safes. So that kind of thing happens in real time. We're not even there.
All right, so if there's only one thing you heard today, let it be this. Yeah, I'm going to retouch on that last point that we just said, and then don't debate whether or not you need one. Like, if this thing were free, everybody would be scrambling to get one. I know I would too myself. But there is a, you know, there is a time in your investment, and there is a time, you know, in your tank's life where you can see the value of monitoring and protecting your tank because probably this is a heck of a lot more than this, and one day you might need it. I'll tell you another one here. Uh, I've seen a lot of tanks, and they aren't what I would describe as uh, electrically safe. So a clean <laughs> install is a safe install. So things like the adaptive reef control boards, where not only does it look nice when you open it up, but all the cords are hidden uh, and tucked away really nicely, uh, actually is a benefit to your family and uh, making sure that it's not only nice, looks nice, but also safe. So if you want to learn more about uh, these adaptive boards, actually, I think Thomas has a video mm -hmm. right here. Uh, and if you want to see the Apex and all the boards and all the accessories, you can see them right here.